Evening guys, Brody Moss has decided to jump into his transparent kayak again, so we've got another crazy video to react to today. I'd say there was a good amount of you, I think, that enjoyed the last Brody Moss kayak video that we reacted to, but if any of you guys missed that one, it was where he had a pretty close encounter with a white shark while he was in his little Tupperware container off the western coast of Australia. It was absolutely wild, but I felt like I could add a little bit of scientific knowledge to the clip in question with some cool bits of info on shark agonistic displays. Because the shark in that first transparent kayak video was not particularly happy with Brody in his kayak and it showed that underwater with that fin depression. He of course couldn't see that happening because he was above the water and it was happening below the water but still I think it was a pretty interesting behavior that was caught on film. Anyway I opened my phone the other day and spotted on YouTube that Brody had headed out again in his transparent kayak and managed to film some more cool interactions with shark and ray species. So I thought you guys might enjoy another quick reaction video where we break down some of the science of what he's seeing. Sorry if this video ends up being a little bit shorter than you guys are used to here on the channel. I've been away for my birthday for a little bit, so I'm trying to catch up. And at the same time, I've been writing a new research paper that is taking up a fair whack of my time, but it's gonna be really cool, so stay tuned for that one. Anyway, enough natter. Let's have a look at this video. So off he heads out into open water here at the start then, and I think from what a lot of you were saying in the comments for the last video, he's getting these drone shots here, likely from a support boat hanging out a shot somewhere. Which I guess means that those slightly dicier situations that he finds himself in, he's likely got at least one person close by to be able to provide him some kind of assistance if he ends up in trouble. Oh, there is an absolutely huge fin right in front of me. Can you see that? It's like a it's a monster shark, man. Super quickly at the start here, then Brody spotted that shark fin and he's describing it as some kind of huge shark. It's kind of funny, actually. Back when I was in the Philippines working with whale sharks, we had a really similar situation happening with these fins. So you can see here, the fin is just cutting through that water really quickly, left to right in that swishy motion. And I remember back in the Philippines, a few of us spotted that from a distance and we were looking at it going, what on earth is that? We actually thought it was a completely different shark species hunting something and just going back and forth really quickly in the water. But after a bit of time and with the help of some binoculars, we realized that it was just the caudal fin of a whale shark. And when the sharks are moving like that, their caudal fin is moved with such force that it makes that quick swishing motion. One of the main reasons here though as to why he's struggling to figure this one out at the time is because of that glare that's on the surface. It's almost impossible to see down into the water to confirm exactly what is attached to that fin. Coming right at me. No, that's the tail. What? What is it? Oh, it's a whale shark. Oh, it's gone straight underneath me. And yeah, there we go. We get that confirmation there that that is actually a whale shark. Although sadly, this individual here is missing large sections of its pectoral fin and its first dorsal fin as well. Although a little bit more on that in a minute. So I had no idea things were about to bloody escalate. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody escalate. That right there is such a Steve Irwinism. The Aussie accent is just so great. I love it. Looking at this drone shot here, though, we can see that he's not alone with that whale shark because 100 yards away, we've got this manta ray here, which is an oceanic manta. And that tells you straight away there is one thing that both of these animals are doing, and that's feeding. And look there, that's definitely a feeding behavior from that manta with those somersaults. This has never, ever happened to me before. And he's in an area they just should not be. I've never seen one here this is so rare completely out of season so he's saying here that this is a super rare encounter because he's never seen one here and that they shouldn't be there now we don't know the exact location as to where Brody films his videos but I would say there's a pretty good chance that it's in Western Australia and if I were to narrow it down a little bit further I'd say it's probably somewhere north of Exmouth around about here on this map and so for any whale shark aficionados out there you'll see that this isn't actually too far away from Ningaloo Reef which is one of the most well documented whale shark aggregations in the world. The whale sharks here have been tracked with satellite tags and generally they'll be heading to Ningaloo in the lead up to the Australian winter around June and July. And what draws them in? Food. It is always food with these guys. Sometime around March or April and usually around a full moon you'll get the annual mass coral spawn which releases eggs and sperm up into the water column and that attracts zooplankton that's feeding on it which in turn then attracts the whale sharks. Then as you move into August and September the whale sharks will head off out into the Indian Ocean and usually they'll be heading up to the more equatorial region regions like Southeast Asia, which you can see on this little handy map here. Now, unless Brody's exaggerating here for effect, I think we've probably got to take him on his word that he's never seen one in this hidden location. And he does also say that it is completely out of season for them as well. So we're guessing he's maybe filmed this fairly recently, as in a couple of weeks ago in early November, or perhaps he's filmed it a while ago back in January, February time. All three of those months there, I would say, are stereotypically out of season for whale sharks in Western Australia. So the question is, what's it doing there? 
at that place and that time. And I think it likely comes down to those missing fins. Brody does say this in the video to be fair, but those missing pectoral fins and dorsal fin are definitely hampering this whale shark. So the pec fins are acting like big hydrofoils or like the wings of an airplane, providing lift and allowing that shark to turn and maneuver effectively through the water. And then the dorsal fin is really important for stability and balance. If any of you guys are boat people, it's kind of like the keel on the underside of a boat, which just allows that boat to stay upright and balanced. Just as a really quick extra scientific fact that I wanted to throw in here as well, it's not just the fins that increase their swimming efficiency. It's also these ridges here, which you can see in these images, and that allows water to flow down the whale shark's body in these little channels, delaying flow separation, and means that the water just shoots down the body. Anyway, scientifically sidetracked. <laughs> So all of these fins, the pectoral fins and the dorsal fin, are very important for hydrodynamics, making sure that that shark is a really efficient swimmer. And that is all the more important for a shark species that travels thousands of miles on its annual migrations. But there's the issue right there. If you're missing three key fins, two pectorals and a dorsal, swimming efficiently through the water becomes a very difficult task. And swimming those thousands of miles up towards the equatorial regions becomes pretty much impossible. Which is why I think this shark is where it is for the time of year, because it's unlikely that shark can make those huge migrations, so instead it sticks to the shallower waters on the continental shelf, opportunistically feeding on plankton as it moves around. The reason why we're seeing that manta ray there as well at the same time is because, yeah, it's feeding on that plankton, sure, but both species of manta ray can be seen year-round off the coast of Western Australia. Sure, there is a bit of a seasonal element to their sightings, with them again spiking towards the winter months, but the manta rays don't tend to migrate as far away as the whale sharks do in this part of the world. I don't think it's from a propeller or from a motor or a vessel because it makes no sense how each fin is almost like perfectly cut. Yeah, agree with him here. These aren't injuries that are consistent with a propeller wound, which tend to produce these deep spiral gouges within the sharks, and it just doesn't really look like that here. So I think it's one of two things. Unfortunately, whale sharks are still hunted by humans. Their meat considered a delicacy, their fins so valuable to sell. So Brody's first shout here is that these fins maybe have been removed by illegal fishermen. The other thing, it could be a birth defect. And then his second guess is birth defect. Now I think that birth defect is pretty unlikely. The chances of a tiny baby whale shark being able to survive all the way to this size, which is nearly adult, I'd say a slim to none. When you're small and you can't swim properly, you are so vulnerable to predators, and there's a ton of things in the Indian Ocean here that would gobble up a disadvantaged whale shark in a second. But moving back to his first guess, I'd say it's potentially more along the right lines here. I think there's a chance that this shark might have been finned. The cuts here do look pretty clean, as if they've been sliced off with a knife, and you are, if you head out a few hundred miles, in waters here where shark finners are operating in large numbers. But my biggest issue with this one is why would they only take those three fins? The culture around shark fins or shark fin soup is that the larger fins will tend to generate more money because a bigger fin is seen as a demonstration of wealthiness. And in this situation, they've left the biggest fin out of all of them on the shark, the caudal fin. It's still there, swishy as ever. I think if this was a finning incident, I'm not quite sure why they would leave that one. I guess you could say that maybe they were rushed for time or didn't really have much space on the boat to hide it, but then why would they leave the second dorsal fin as well? That one would be really easy to hide along with the other three fins that they've taken. I don't know, it's a possibility for sure, but there's also a few question marks with it at the same time as well. Which is why then we could throw in another hypothesis, and that is that they were bitten off. Now, a killer whale could have easily bitten off those fins, but killer whales aren't particularly interested in the chewy cartilage, pectoral or dorsal fins. They're after the liver, so I think if it was killer whales, this shark would not be alive anymore. Brody says that the white shark he filmed in the other transparent car video was pretty much seen in the exact same location as this whale shark and based on lots of his other videos you get some big tiger sharks here as well so I would say there's a good chance that some of these fins have indeed been bitten off. It's not the first time that whale sharks have been bitten by other sharks, and we even have documented scientific accounts of it happening at none other than Ningaloo Reef. Check this example here in 2003 of a whale shark that's had its dorsal fin almost entirely bitten off by a shark, and then check it out a year later in 2004 where that wound has basically entirely healed. If we just look at these two images side by side here, the whale shark bitten by a shark in 2003, and then Brody's whale shark here, that bite 
composition is very similar. The only thing that we're missing on Brody's whale shark though is some additional evidence of shark bites on the flanks. Predatory sharks like white sharks or tiger sharks are almost certainly sneaking up on a whale shark of this size from behind, which is likely why it's the rear of the dorsal fin that's been bitten and then the trailing edge of those pectoral fins. But from what we can see in the literature, there's also the occasional bites along the flanks of whale sharks, like you can see in the one from 2003 here. Also, super quick side note again, but if we just zoom into the bite on the left flank here, you can see that it's been whacked by a big shark initially for sure, but look at those little circular indentations there as well, especially the one on the left here. That right there is an additional bite from a cookie cutter shark. How savage is that? It's already been bitten by a decent sized predatory shark. We're probably talking three or four meters long. And then after it's been bitten and it's got that big open wound, a cookie cutter shark has come along and taken another bite. That is grim. Now I've gone through Brody's clips of this whale shark, particularly the underwater sections, and I can't see the slightest bit of scarring anywhere else on the body, especially the flanks where we might have seen some more bites. The thing here is though, the healing capabilities of whale sharks are literally insane. Major traumatic injuries like the ones we're seeing on these fins here can entirely heal within six months and then minor ones can heal within weeks. So this shark may have had bites to other parts of its body, but they've just completely healed up with minimal evidence. And the reason those bites on the fins are more noticeable to us is because the whale sharks can't entirely regenerate them. They can partially regenerate them, but not fully. And so because of those healing capabilities, it's really difficult to tell exactly when those bites happened. I'd say say based on the tissue around it though it's been at least a year and probably even more than that but like i said i'm no expert so if i get the opportunity hopefully i can hop in the water and get some footage that's the main goal of this video we want to find out what the hell bloody happened to this beautiful creature well there you go hopefully i've been able to shine a little bit more light on that one for you guys and for brody as well what do you guys think do you think it was a finning incident or do you think they're bites from other predatory sharks i do think a case could be made for either one of those but i'm definitely leaning more towards the predatory bites i am really keen to hear all of your thoughts on this one though so make sure you let me know in the comments what you guys think caused it quick shout out to brody for capturing that footage of the whale shark because it's allowed us to get really stuck into the analysis of those injuries and also a shout out to him for being respectful around the shark as well but before you all dash off if you want to learn a little bit more about whale sharks then you might quite enjoy this video that we did on them here earlier i told you guys about how i was in the philippines a little while ago researching these big spotty fish and in this video i tell you all about it and about the ecotourism operation there that has completely spiraled out of control so make sure you give it a watch